I got to tell you, this is funny. Just a sidebar real quick. I What'd am you do? invested in Shiba Inu. Now, here's the deal. <laughs> this is funny because I love the community. You know what I mean? I'm going to lose uh, money probably, but yeah. I got a ton of it. I got like billions of it. So I committed to the group. Like this is a bunch of young kids. I said, if this thing ever gets to 0. 0.001, I will buy a yellow Lamborghini with a Shiba Inu logo on the side. So, <laughs> Not Shiva. <laughs> I got problems, John. I tell uh. you, I got problems, man. <laughs> <laughs>
because you know there you know there are unicorns out there that just crank it and have these huge numbers. I mean, I, I've done forty million plus downloads. I I've lost count in the podcast, but it's it's not about that. It's about each individual person that you connect with and build relationships with. And even like us, we haven't talked in a while, but it's like you know it's been a couple of years really since we've sat down, and it's like we haven't missed any time, you know. And that's because right, I respect right. you and. You build real relationships with people and, and people will go and come back. And that's what like podcasting, that stuff, you can't get caught up in it. Just do it, stick with it and realize you're going to suck. It's, you know, it is what it is and just keep going through it. I, it's tough. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what's, uh, what's exciting you now? What's, what's, what's a, what's a passion project you're working with right now? Well, Other I, than I, yourself. You know, because well, I mean, me, you're, I mean, you're it's, always it's, working on yourself. Yeah, yeah. I think it's who we become. I mean, that's what's exciting me. I mean, I, I haven't been drinking for 30 days. Um, really reaching levels of success that I, I, I didn't think I could. Um, and it's always about pushing your limits or higher, you know, your your limit, your levels. And like just my coaching and the things I'm doing are getting better because I'm getting better. And it, you don't realize that until you get there and you just keep working on yourself. So my programs and the things I'm doing, I'm excited about YouTube's fun. I'm doing tech reviews. I got a 21 year old kid and a 23 year old kid that keep me young that are all fired up. We're doing these shorts and trying to figure all this stuff out. Um, so it's all just about having fun, you know, and, and, and you're right. It honestly, I can't say anything else, but it's about growing. Hmm. Very good. Very good. And I mean, and so you're passionate about YouTube. What's the deal with YouTube? Why? After podcast, 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 are you like, okay, let's let's get on cam? I, I think just because I love the cameras, I wanted to be a photographer. You know what I mean? So it yeah. really afforded me to get equipment. You know what I mean? And it's like, so I just started doing it because I love the gear. And I didn't even know what a 20 millimeter lens to a, you know, a hundred millimeter lens was a year ago. And so now I'm learning all these cameras and buying cameras and just having fun. So it's, it's not, you know, I'm, it, what's crazy is when you start to do things, not for the money and you start mm -hmm. to, cause you're just want to learn and you're excited about it, it's when you typically have success. And I find in YouTube is very similar. It's like, we, we produce this video, like we got a gaming chair in and we did all this production work, took us five hours literally the video bombed 150 views like she came out of the gate didn't do anything just you know and then you know just for example this morning some news came out on one of the tablets i cover and it just went viral and it was the worst video i've ever shot in my life it was with this camera and this microphone so it's just like all of our expectations and that's what excites me it's like it's like putting a puzzle together all of this stuff it's like everything we know, we don't know. And all these marketers who think they know, sometimes they don't know because they haven't done it long enough. And we just got to get out there and do things, right? And that's where you start to learn. And I think that's what excites me is like the newness of it, but also being able to complete it and inspire people to do it. I mean, it's not new. I mean, I've done 700 videos on YouTube. It's just, it didn't monetize till last year. Mm, mm. You know what? Uh, one of the things is uh, you're a... Um... I mean, you take in so much content in terms of just learning and and uh, watching stuff and, you know, reading books. I mean, can you kind of talk through this learning thing that you do and how do you how do you do this all the time? man? how do you stay fresh? Well, you know, it's funny, Matt Kramer, who's a friend of ours, a singer of Saigon Kick, you know, mutual friend has said, yeah. you know, what you're really good at is research. And I, I never saw myself because I was a terrible student in school. I mean, yeah, I did my MBA, went through and did PhD, but that was all, I mean, it took years, you know, 30 years. Like I, I was one of those eight year undergrad students. And it wasn't until the internet came out that I really got into like the Google searches and reading and trying to find out the real information behind everything. And I think interest creates education, right? Mm. So you know, I got into golf and it's like, I just threw myself in it. Now I got four professional golfers and one of them just won on the PGA tour for the first time. I actually coach wow. golfers. It's insane. And you know, when you met me, I was, yeah, into golf, you know? I was into fighting with sir and all this Israeli fighting stuff. So, you know, you throw yourself into stuff and I think interest creates learning. So if you surround yourself with whatever it is you want to learn, if you want to be a podcaster, then surround yourself with the technology, go on websites, start reading about it. And, and all of a sudden you become that person. And I think, I think so many people are so scattered in my last book, Sacred Six. I think so many people are so scattered. That's a big problem, right? I'm going to go do YouTube. I'm going to do TikTok. I'm going to do chat GPT, right? That's the new thing. And they get lost in all of this tech instead of just focusing on their own growth and putting out a message that works and using a medium that they just continue to do consistently. That's what people are looking for. 
And I think everybody's looking for the, 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 you know, the quick, fast thing. And there really isn't anything. Yeah. Some people hit it on TikTok. Yeah. Some people like me, I started podcasting before anybody was podcasting. You could get the timing right, but it's like selling a house in a hot market. Nobody knows when that timing is going to hit. So if you consistently put out information mm. and, and you do your research and you get excited about a particular topic and become a master in that topic, you don't always have to be the best. It's kind of like martial arts. If you're a yellow belt, you can teach white belts. And that's where money is. Riches are there. Riches. Riches in the niches. We've heard the that. Riches for years, are in right? the niches. We've heard that before. Absolutely. But I mean, okay, good. You're if you're yellow belt, you can teach a white belt. But doesn't it take does it take something specific? Something what does it really take to be confident enough as a yellow? to teach white, knowing all of us are trying to get the black. Yeah, I think, John, you have it. Like certain people have it. I think you just got to be authentic. And I think that's the hard part. Like it's all, that's why I, oh. it comes down to working on yourself because it's all about self-belief. If you don't believe in yourself, nobody else is going to believe you. And so if you legitimately, and this is critical, if you legitimately want to support and help other people, there's always a market for that, but you got to legitimately want to do it. So many people out there in our space they, they're just doing it for the money. You know what I mean? And that's cool. You can do it for the money too. I, I'm not anti-prosperity, but you legitimately got to want to put yourself out there and you got to realize you're going to get hit by a train once in a while in the world we live in. I mean, it's a very nasty world, unfortunately. And, you know, one of the things I learned, I'm working on a new book called Heavy as a Crown as a King, how to, how to be successful in a world that hates successful people, is it's very right. challenging because what happens is you you, you want to put yourself out there and, and then all of a sudden you get run over. The truth is most people don't respect you as you gain success. This is what's hard. Most people are envious. So the only way you get over the envy is to show your weakness and show that you're a truly human being. And then people will want to learn from you. Otherwise, they're kind of envious of you in the world that we live in with social media. It's not, we used to respect people for being that successful, but now it's like success. And I'm talking success financially, you know, success is a loaded term. There's a relationships and everything else, but understanding that is going to be really important as you build that, that, you know, you've got to get past the envy you know, and, 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 and that's where you got to do your own self growth because people are going to say, well, who the hell are you as you put stuff out there? And, and it's important to be able to be real. So they know you're just not some, I guess our eighties term poser. Right. And that's, what's so hard. And so if you legitimately want to help and you legitimately put yourself out there, cause you care, you're going to win. If you're authentic, I don't care who you are. You will, you'll get there because people will come and follow you because they're, they're searching for authentic people right now. Great title, man. I, I mean, at least the subtitle. So, I mean, uh, you really think, well, okay, I'm not even going to ask. Yeah, I'll ask it, but it's kind of rhetorical. I mean, you really think people hate successful people? I think they're envious of successful people. I think, they, they, and again, there's some reason for that. We were talking mm -hmm. offline, you know, there's some people that are considered successful that to me haven't really done much to be successful. So I get it, right? But it's hard to be successful in this world today and put that energy out there because it's such an egoic world. And so you've got to be authentic at the same time. And I think that's what's so critical. You know, so just for example, Post Malone. I absolutely love Post Malone. I, I love his attitude, his energy, his humbleness, and the way that he is, is he's just a real human being. And I think that's why he has such mon monumental success is because how can you not like Post Malone, you know? Yeah. But there are people that don't like Post Malone. There are people that don't like Mr. Beast after he, you know, get, cured a thousand people's blindness. They're like, well, oh, he's just making money off of that. Yeah, but he's putting the money right back into it. Right. So that's what I'm saying. People are just envious of successful people. Mm. And, and to some people, some reasons they have, right? Because there's some people that are entitled and I get it. But for the majority of people that are working hard out there, it's tough because you get scared to put yourself out there. Yeah, it seems, yeah, it's like you're saying, I mean, like, it's almost like standing in front of a bus these days. Um, when you and I started, I mean, it was not, the social element was not what it is today where it's just, I don't know. It, it I hate can to be, be I, well, yeah. for kids, 
It's going to yes. be hard. Imagine dating and all that in this world today. It's very challenging. It's not like when we grew up. And so understanding and being able to navigate that, I think it all comes back to authenticity. You know, everybody on Facebook has the perfect life, right? Everybody. It's like, man, nobody shares the negatives. You know, Pilar said, well, gosh, how come these people, you know, get to travel so much? And I'm like, I really don't. They're not showing you the rest of the fights and everything else that they're going through. And I think that plastic world needs to be pierced. And I think that's what why people don't like people that are showing success is because they realize, hey, my life's got issues. Well, shit, everybody's got issues. Sorry for exactly. swearing, but everybody's dealing with something, John. And that's the problem in today's world. Nobody is sharing all that. And so people are like, man, I, I must, there must be something wrong with me. No, there's nothing wrong with you. We're all screwed up. Everyone is screwed up. Just, just find your passion. And I think what scares me is the apathy that comes along with that hate of success or the perceived success and the apathy where people start giving up a little bit. And I see it every day in my business because heartfelt entrepreneurs go and, you know, they get Kajabi, they try their podcast, they build the course. And you can see them every day in the Kajabi group, they'll pull. Kajabi, by the way, is a software platform that people put courses on. They're like, well, I'm putting my course out. Nobody's buying it. Well, you're a heartfelt entrepreneur. You're not solving a problem. You don't realize people don't really care, you know? And it's sad because then they get apathetic and they quit. When the yeah. truth is, they just need to get through the plastic life of what this bubble that people perceivably live in, you know, the reels and the TikTok and all that stuff, which is not reality. What's reality is waking up in the morning and going, looking in the mirror and going, damn, I got to pay the bills this week. I need to go get a job or figure out how to get this done. Man, I must suck. All these people on TikTok are doing great. I'm just going to watch them. No, make your own TikTok you know, and start building your own life. And I'm just passionate about that because apathy to me is like the worst thing in the world. And I see it happening a lot, especially with our kids. They're just giving up. Hmm. Do you think that you could today replicate what you did when you started? Yeah, because I'm redoing it again. I mean, I'm going on Morning Coach 5.0. Yeah, it's just... I Honestly, John, it's about being authentic and being real. I mean, there's billions of people in the world. You don't need many. And that's the thing I always teach. You know, 100 people at 100 bucks a month will give, create freedom for almost anybody. And if you spend 15 years and find those 100 people, you never have to work a day in your life. In 2009, I had 1,200 people come into a membership site, just to put in perspective. You know, they're paying 20 bucks a month, right? And, and at that point, I have never made less than 14, 15,000 in my membership site every month. That's freedom. I don't make millions. I've never been that person to try to make millions, but I keep my expenses low and it allows me to have freedom. And I think too many people are trying to get the vanity and the millions instead of focusing on the smaller numbers, yes. loving people, taking care of them and building a lifestyle and then scale your lifestyle as you go, scale it as you get going, but keep those expenses down. I call it the FU lifestyle instead of FU money. <laughs> I like that. F you lifestyle. So you're not trying to keep up with the stuff out there. You're trying to get your freedom and then scale from there. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's the starting point, it. right? That's kind yeah. of what I call ILD is like, get your freedom and then you can start, you know, having all the fun stuff. But all that stuff is garbage anyways. I mean, go get a Lamborghini, run it for a day. I'm telling you, it's not that exciting. It's not, your value is not in those things. Your value is in you and who you become, not the things that you acquire. Now I'm working on my pilot's license and I'd like to get a plane this year and be able to fly around. That's the 18 years of growth and getting that point. And even that is not even that exciting to me. Yeah, whatever. Flying whatever. But I'm working on it. See, it's a, it, and the reason yeah. I'm working on it is because I need to scale. So in order for me to work, it's funny, me and my mom made these conversations. Like I got to spend money to go to make me work harder, you know, and it forces me to work and it's, you know, I got to get the fifth book done. I got to write. That's what it's about. Yeah. I mean, but you got, you set goals for yourself. Um, after you reach a goal, do you set the next goal? I mean, cause some of us, some people have, you know, an idea, like you said, your I, IDL, right? I, intel, ILD, ILD, right? Intelligent, intelligent Life Design, life yeah, design yeah. right? So, you know, we could, we could sit in one of those sessions and it's like, you'll, you'll get people to think about what it would, what their life would look like, what, where it is. What happens when you reach that? Well, I think, I think, John, we got to get residual and passive income, right? So residual yeah. income is when you work, but still some money's coming in. You know, this business, it's Amazon, any of those businesses that you can get going where money's coming in while you sleep instead of trading your time for hours. So there's a lot yeah. of things you can do, you know, in a laundromat, right? That's still residual. 
that's critical. Get some money coming in to cover your expenses so you get your time back. That's goal one. Time is mm. the most valuable currency. You've got to get your time back. Okay. Then we can start working towards what the passive income state is, which is 4.5%. This is what I wish they were teaching in school and they don't. But but all the math over the years has showed us is actually used to be 4%, that you can live on 4% of the revenue you have or 4.5 now for 30 years. I'm not a financial planner. I'm not going to play one here, but you can go Google that and learn about it. So basically, if you have a million dollars in, in the stock market, you'll be earning 45,000 a year. So if you have 2 million, you're going to live off of 90,000. So if you can get your lifestyle to that rate, 45 to, to you know 90,000, that's the big goal. That's the 30 year mm. goal, right? Then the regular goal is, hey, I need five to $8,000 a month. How do I make that residually? Do I have to go out and bust my butt to, you know, get vending machines and maybe get Amazon going? And, you know, last count I had, I have 18 income streams. Right. So I've, and some make two dollars, some make ten thousand, you know, and it's just all these things over the year and took 18 years. Right. So finding those things that throw money at you is what's so critical. And then you can go from there. But you obviously got to keep your expenses low because then you have time to experiment. You got time to try some things and fail. And believe me, I fail more than most people. And that's why, you know, I find those things at work. Man, so you know what? You know, the low expenses thing, I I don't understand, you know, I don't understand why I understand that. I don't well, you John, if you think about it, eight to 10 grand a month, you can live a pretty damn good life. I mean, yeah, even here, mortgage, yeah, three or $4,000 mortgage, $600 car payment, food and everything else. But I don't know why we get this jaded perspective that we need millions and millions of dollars. We don't. We need to organize ourselves and, and focus on smaller numbers and, and, and build relationships with people. And you don't need a lot of money to live a real free, fun life. It, it, you know, and then you start scaling it. If you wow. even want to scale it, what's, what are you going to get? Another bedroom in your house? You know, what's that really do for you? Most people just spend time in their living room in their kitchen anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, literally 20%, two of the rooms in your house is where you spend like 80% of your time. Period. Exactly. And so these huge houses and people just, and, and for example, where I was the country club that I lived in, cause I wanted to learn golf and I jumped, you know, those people were so leveraged. Most of those people, they were driving the Lamborghini, had a huge house, but they were miserable. They had to work 60, 80 hours a week because they had no freedom because they were so locked into this lifestyle that wasn't even real to me. It wasn't even real. Like most of them were miserable. And it's like, gosh, just downsize everything. Quit. You quit your job. You live on the beach. You could do whatever the heck you wanted. But, you know, you do you need this huge house on a golf course. Hmm. Man. And I mean, just over time, it just burns and burns and burns till you get burned out. You know what I mean? We yeah, wonder why people have so much stress. Why do you think we live in the world we live in? I mean, we live in a great opportunity and people are just angry. And a lot of people are angry because they're so leveraged. And the truth is our education system is not helping. You know, they're not teaching things. We talked about this earlier. I talked about the money that we're sending governmentally all over. We're not in the inner cities promoting healthy food, bringing farmers markets in, you know, instead of pushing people to McDonald's and they're eating it every day and, you know, they're getting overweight and unhealthy and teaching them entrepreneurship and how to do these things. We're really not doing any of that because, of the, you know, there's money being made by the big companies and all this. And I don't want to rip big companies. I'm just saying you have to pierce that veil. And the way you pierce that veil is to keep your expenses low and discover ways to make residual income. And the truth is a lot of people don't like millennials. They say, all oh, these kids don't want to work. I don't know if they don't want to work. I think they're just seeing through it and going, mm -hmm. man, there's other ways. Why am I going to go work for you for $45,000 a year when right. I can figure out a way to make, to spend $2,000 a month and live on $2,000 a month and do these other things? things sell on ebay sell on amazon and so people Drive our age Uber. are getting mad at them yeah, yeah. And they're going yeah, yeah they're going what are you doing you need to go get a job yeah i don't uh, want a job right so it's a it's a really transitional time and it goes back to the primary education that we're getting and they don't teach any of this right the system's really about going to school getting in debt and then you know working for a company the rest of your life that was the original intent not that that's good or bad that used to work it doesn't work anymore, you know, and, and even if it does or doesn't work, we have opportunities. And that's how this all started back then, John, I was in corporate, hated my job. And it's like, there's got to be a better way. And that's when I really started studying what I call ILD and put sacred six and all my coaching together, because it was like, there's got to be a better way than this, there has to be. And there is. 
And you've got to be willing to get yourself out there. You got to be authentic. You got to be willing to get run over and you got to go learn some skills. Unfortunately, oh, yeah. you've got to go out. Like I said, I'm learning this stuff. I didn't know this stuff two years ago. I don't need to learn it, but skills matching talent equals genius. And everybody has talent. So we got to find out what your talent is and then figure it out and then stop trying to be the vanity social media influencer superstar. It's just not, it's not what it is. You'll never win in that game. Never. Interesting. Now you go to Columbia. Is that right? Sometimes? Yeah. 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 Columbia. Yeah. So, Eba Gay and Bogota. Okay. And so um, are, are these well-developed countries now? I know, I know, I know it's moving up, moving up, moving yeah, up. Yeah, it's getting there. I mean, there's always issues. I mean, there's corruption everywhere. I think there's yeah, corruption yeah, yeah. in the United States. We just hide it better. Um, everybody, <laughs> there's corruption yes, everywhere, unfortunately. Everyone. Um, but yeah, it's getting better. I don't have any problem. I'm a gringo, gringo, and I go down there. It comes uh -huh. back to we say no demi papaya in Spanish, which is don't show off, don't brag. Anytime you go into any environment and you really care about the people and you're authentic and you're real, they love you. I mean, Colombia, gosh, they just love you to try to speak the language and be a part. Beautiful, beautiful people. Only place awesome. I had an issue with that was Paris. The Parisians <laughs> can be a little bit of a jerk. We have a friend, Patrice, right? Oh my so, God, Patrice is going to be all over you. <laughs> he's going to be so mad. But no, I tried to speak French a lot in Paris and they're, they don't they don't want you to do But no, Colombia is the opposite. They're awesome. In fact, I don't like that. Yeah, Nick, Nicholas Echevarria was a third Colombian golfer to win on the PGA Tour last weekend, which was just phenomenal. We're all excited about that. So everybody's excited. So my, my question is, and I've seen this because I've traveled, you know, and I'll go to these countries, and these are definitely third world countries. But I swear, the people there are happy. They're, they're, I mean, just their demeanor is so different. Like you said, sometimes we're jealous, we're angry. You know what I'm saying? We got so many things going on in our country and we've got some of the best opportunity. Then I go to places where people don't have a third of the opportunity that we have, but in terms of just their, the continents of their uh, being, I don't, I don't want to say, I don't want to diminish, you know, their existence, but it's not like they're sitting around being like, you know, belly aching about their circumstance well here the thing is so they they're passionate about life you know they live to live to live right instead of live to work as we do and the truth is the problem that's that we good. have that's good is mark twain said comparison is the end of end of joy comparison is the end of joy and mm. that's what we do in this country it's like oh i wonder what john has what is he wearing and we all do it i mean I'm, i do it we all i, mean, do I it. try yeah, not yeah, to yeah. but we all do it and comparison is the end of joy wow. so it just means you know, we're, we're doing that all the time. And down there, they don't have any comparison. They don't have any ability to they're compare. All, yeah. They're all in the same situation. Correct. And there is very little opportunity, you know, once you, especially for older, once you get older in Columbia, like you're past 40, it's like, man, they just say, Hey, we're not hiring you. We can go get a 20 year old. So it's really challenging for them. So you, you either find joy or you, you know, you, you die, you know, and that's, that's the truth. And so it's like finding that passion of things you do. I'll give you a good example. Mm -hmm. that uh, there's a woman that cleans our house and you know me, I'm a coach. I'm always trying to better their lives. I'm like, we could do this. We could build this internet company. We could do this. She's like, no, I just like have, I love cleaning houses and cooking. Mm -hmm. And it's just weird. Cause that's such a weird concept in the United States because everybody's like, well, you can't do that. You got to right. keep growing. Right. But she loves it. She absolutely loves it. She loves serving. She loves helping. That's what her, what she loves to do. And so who am I to steal her peace or her joy? And mm -hmm. so it's, it's like I said, I really believe in this country. It's about comparison is the end of joy. You know, if we would stop That's comparing it. so much and just live our own lives, I mean, social media, gosh. And I mean, we're all, I mean, that's what the news is, that's right? It. We just get sucked into it so bad. Alvin Kamara just got in this huge fight. Oh, I got to see the video. No, leave that. Let those, you know, why do I got to see Alvin Kamara's misery? You know, he'll get through that. He made a big mistake, right or wrong. But it's like, we just get sucked into the Murdoch murders or just recently, right? right? Gosh, it's all drama. All the world's a stage. Can we just pull out of that? And we can't, it's, it's rough. Mm. We all get sucked into it. Well, talk about the sacred six real quick. What are the, what's the, what's the six? 
Well, six is basically this idea that came from years ago. This Ivy Lee went into a factory and said, hey, I got this thing that will help you. It's Charles Schwab and actually out of Gary, Indiana, Michael Jackson country. I know you love Prince. Michael's from my area, just <laughs> up the street. So Michael Jackson was from Gary. Uh, but anyways, the steel mills were really big in the 1900s. And he came in and said, I got, a, I got something for you that would change your life. And I actually heard this on an Earl Nightingale record. Record, John, the first ever motivational record. I heard this story and I ended up writing a book about it because it was so phenomenal. And it's just basic. It's like he went in there and said, what I want you to do is take the six things you need to do tomorrow. Write down those six things. Don't start on number one or don't start on number two until number one's finished. And then you start on number two. Whatever you don't get done that day, you move to the following day Next and step. start on that. Okay? okay. He said, you tell me what you want to pay me. So he left. The guy gave him $10,000 uh, three months later, which is like, you know, I don't know quarter million dollars for yeah, 15 to, minutes yeah. a day. Mm -hmm. and, and so the sacred six are those six things that are very meaningful that you're going to get done. And what they really are is cutting out projects because we all have too many projects saying, okay, you can only work on six things. So it might be learning guitar, playing golf, building your business, but limiting things instead of having a million things going on and then setting up how you're going to get six things done. I actually have it up on my board here. So I have a big board back here. You can see, but anyways, it's, I got a heater down there, but I, I, you know, it's the six things you're going to do and check the boxes off and keep it real simple. That's the sacred six in, in a nutshell. Good, good. And that is your first book. Well, it wasn't that it wasn't your first book. Yeah, That's your like, last book. Yeah, my last book. Correct. That's your last book. And then when do you think the new one's coming out? I don't know. I'm just starting that now, you know, really? the crown of the King. So yeah, I'm, I'm getting feedback on what we want to do. And it's, it's like I said, it's successful. It's, it's how to be successful in a world that hates successful people. Right. I so love it's, it. it's a, it's a challenging book for me and I'm just interviewing a lot of people and it goes along with my marketing because one of the things I try to work with is people that are working to be successful, that are willing to put the work in and aren't just looking for the, the button to push. Right. And there's, I, I look for the button to push too, but there is no button right? It's just, you got to just keep doing it. And so it, it really is going to help my audience come to me too, which is great because that's the type of people I want to work with. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you work with people, what are you doing? You know, I know you just got back. Didn't you just do a, 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 a mastermind kind of event somewhere? Yeah. I'm actually building a retreat center here outside Chicago. I got, and you can see it kind of back in there. That's a conference room with a theater and 10 seats. I got a night, a table from 1861 from the civil war, um, that we built it has a Lincoln penny in it. We call it the Lincoln table. It's awesome. And it was actually up here in Northern Indiana. It was part of a tree that they took down. That was a sugar maple. They thought they would need for sustainability because they didn't know what was going to happen during the war. So that's our big conference table for 10 people. So I built a whole retreat center here, which is pretty here cool. In, in, in Indy? Yeah. Yeah. In Indiana. So it's good. It's really? really nice. Yeah. It's really cool. We're just finishing up. Um, we got a hotel on the lake. It's on the lake. And actually what's crazy is in the early 1900s, late 1800s, this area was held by the Chautauqua uh, business group out of New York. They mm -hmm. had motivational meetings in this property. So it's really wow. crazy in the late 1800s. So we're bringing, raising some of those spirits back up uh, yeah. into the old Chautauqua kind of, uh, which I had never heard of before, but that's oh, what they did here. That's pretty awesome. That's yeah. pretty awesome, man. Congratulations on that. You know, Thank you. definitely. I got to get up there. I got to get I up you. there. I'm coming. I'm coming. That is so awesome, man. So tell the people, you know what? First, let me ask you the last question. All right. That's the last question. Then you'll, you'll tell your info. All right. But what did I not ask you that I should have asked you? Well, I think you should ask me, how can I help you? Right. Because oh, okay. John, I think that's the key to every, every relationship. Mm. It's like, you know, codependency is a horrible thing. Independency is huge. And if you just get in the habit of like saying, you know, for me coming back to you and going, John, what can I do for you? And really legitimately doing that. It's amazing how much that makes a difference. So that would be, I would, I would want to ask you, what can I, what can I do for you? That would be the right. question. You don't really ask me, but I would really ask you that. Oh, well, no, 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 no. This is my question. Ah, this is my so question guess, to you. I guess, what would you, what would be the question that you- Yeah, would, anything that I didn't ask you that I probably should ask well, you. I just think the idea of, you know, how we've been doing this so long, both of us, I think is so yeah, important that, you know, people I, underestimate this, John. They underestimate what they can do in a long part of time, but they yep. overestimate what they can do in a real short amount of time. And I think that to me is- 
what I wish I could crawl into people's brains and say, shake them and go, you're overestimating it. It doesn't happen. Some, it, maybe it does. If it does, great. Good for you. Great. Maybe lightning right. will strike or maybe the Archangel Gabriel will come down and sing or whatever you believe in. I don't care, but some miracle occurs. But you, we've been at the, you've been doing the shows, got, you know, for years and years and years. And, you know, we were just talking about Brandon, right? He's mm -hmm. finally, man, look at his business. But how many years Huge. has he been doing it? Yeah, forever, so, man. Quit overestimating what you can do in a little amount of time. You know, don't worry about it. Just stick with it and, and just keep doing it, you know? And believe me, it's going to be a roller coaster ride. Nobody said this was going to be easy. And you ain't never lie. Strap <laughs> in. And get ready, right? Exactly, exactly. They're going, you know, any entrepreneur, you're going to have low cash flow moments where you don't know where the money is going to come. You're going to feel stress. And I know everybody looks like they're successful out there on social media. Everybody's the Instagram millionaire. You know, the truth is a lot of lease cars out there, a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety. Don't worry about all that <laughs> stuff, you know? I can go sit on my car too. I could, that's what I need to do, John. I need a Lamborghini. That's what you need to do. Whatever, man. You, you go sit out there on your sports car. I did. I got to tell you, this is funny. Just a sidebar real quick. I What'd am you do? invested in Shiba Inu. Now, here's the deal. <laughs> this is funny because I love the community. You know what I mean? I'm going to lose uh, money probably, but yeah. I got a ton of it. I got like billions of it. So I committed to the group. Like this is a bunch of young kids. I said, if this thing ever gets to 0 0.001, I will buy a yellow Lamborghini with a Shiba Inu logo on the side. <laughs> Not Shiva. <laughs> I got problems, John. I told uh, you, I got problems, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm not hilarious. making much money on that. Let me tell you, I'm, I'm down. No, I'm you're not. Killed. Yeah, I'm getting killed right now. Just but don't sure sell it. Fun. Just pump, don't sell pump, it. Pump. Hold, yeah. hold, hold. Oh, that's it. Just don't sell it. You'll be fine. <laughs> you're, yeah, right. We'll see. But you know, you know what we'll see. I'll be in that Shiva Ina Lamborghini oh, driving around. I'll drive it to Atlanta. At. That's cool. I'm, hi, come pick me up, bro. I'm ready to roll. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh. So if people want to follow you, get engaged with JV, you know, what's the best point? You know, morning coach. I'm start. morning coach on everything. Morning coach. Twitter, it's Instagram, serious. Tiki Tiki. Um, <laughs> you know, all of these things. I don't even know what they are, but they know everything about me. They probably know all my passwords. I'm done. Like, I'm just put a fork in me. I'm, I mean, you are the morning coach, bro. I mean, yeah, the morning, the morning coach. coach everywhere. I should Every be day. Coach. You, can hear I, from I, you know what? The only reason, John, you know, the only reason is because I found the URL. If I didn't find that URL, I wasn't going to get out of bed. So I had to figure it out because morning coach was available all those years. It ago. said the morning part helped. The morning, <laughs> man, I had it. I had to do it. I wish night coach was available. That's probably what <laughs> I should have began. You are too crazy, man. <laughs> All right, guys. There you go. JV Glossinger. Hey, buddy. It's so great to catch up with you. Hang out for just a minute. I'm going to get rid of these guys, and we'll chat for a second. All right, guys. We're out of here. Another episode. You know, follow us, uh, like us, share us, all those things, you know. All right. And Tiki Takas. All right. Peace. I'm out. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,